When you make a conscious effort to avoid anything sexual for a period of time, something really interesting happens. You kind of start to feel like a kid again. You kind of start to feel that similar joy and wonder that you had before you even knew what sex was. You know how kids are just like always so joyous and curious about the world around them. They're always like running around, touching everything, talking to strangers. They're just so, they're like, they're just carefree. You kind of start to get in touch with that part of yourself again. And just to be clear, what I'm talking about may not necessarily apply to everybody. This is just my current experience. I'm evolving daily. I might even watch this video a few months down the line and be like, hmm, I can't believe I actually thought that. You know, this is just where I'm at at this present moment. This is what's worked for me for the past few years. And it might sound ridiculous to a lot of you. I completely get that. I don't think cel uh, celibacy is 100% necessary for uh, everybody. And if it doesn't resonate with you, that's all right. A lot of you may be in committed relationships. You might have uh, a healthy sex life and so forth. So. I encourage you to continue doing what works for you. But if you do struggle with sex addiction in any way, which a lot of males do, if you feel like it's something that consumes you, this might be a really good way for you to desexualize your brain. A lot of spiritual quotes go something along the lines of, you know, be simple like a child, have the nature of a child. And they're not talking about acting like a child or being immature, they're talking about getting back to that natural childlike state. I'm realizing now that I have this sort of curiosity for the world around me that I never had before. Um, educating myself in areas that I never had any interest in, uh, like politics and finance and, you know, learning how to work with my hands and science, like just all of these different areas of life that I'm just genuinely really interested in learning about. I always find myself researching and educating myself, watching documentaries, because at this age, when you get back that childlike curiosity, you're able to actually do something about it. You know, when you're a kid, you're not really intelligent enough to really want to learn uh, too much and you're kind of just trapped to whatever your parents want to give you. But now it's like you have this freedom, you have this curiosity, and now you have this freedom to actually do something about it. I think it's because I'm just putting all of my sexual energy into a, greatest, uh, a greater purpose. And let me be clear, when I say celibacy, I mean like 100% cutting anything sexual out for a period of time. It doesn't have to be for the rest of your life. Why do you think some of the most prolific inventors and scientists and writers, philosophers, etc., uh, many of them lived like hermits because and I think it's because they had such a passion for life that wasn't undermined by just these carnal desires, you know? Uh, I mean, some of them were probably a little awkward and struggled socially. That probably played a role as well because they were so intelligent. And I'm not advocating that uh, everybody go live like a hermit. That's that's not necessary. It's not healthy. I don't think we're supposed to live like that. Uh, you definitely should actually work on your social skills. I think that that should be a main priority for everybody. When it comes to forming any type of healthy relationship with anybody, that's gonna be the basis for it. And I think a lot of men are kind of deluded uh, in this area and they focus too much on the wrong things. Like they focus way too much on the, the fitness and the money and that stuff's important, but you know, without being able to communicate effectively, you're not really gonna be able to form a relationship with anybody. It's the most important trait that you need to build, but it's also the hardest. And it's definitely difficult in this day and age. It's not really our fault. You know, we are very disconnected. COVID was no help, and now everything's just like on Zoom, everything's online, just more and more technologies coming out every year. Uh, but we kind of have to take responsibility and accountability. You know, we can't just sit and play the victim. Uh, that's my opinion on that anyway. But anyway, back to the main point about celibacy. When you choose this path, the path to be celibate, meditation is going to be absolutely key. Because when you start getting in touch with your higher self, your true self, that connection is what gives you that childlike zest for life. And you get that through deep contemplation and meditation. And you have to really dedicate yourself to meditating. Like I'm talking 20 to 60 minutes every single day, just you sitting down completely alone, just you and your breath and nothing else, okay? You can't half-ass this. I'm telling you guys, this is absolutely life-changing. I can't stress that enough. What, the type of celibacy I'm talking about here is mostly gonna work for people who are voluntary, voluntarily celibate, voluntary celibate, meaning you're making a conscious choice to do this. You know that you could have sex if you really wanted to, but you're making the decision to abstain from it. Involuntary celibate people, uh, you know, the incels, they, I feel like they ha tend to have a sense of lack in them. Because when you didn't receive something in childhood or young adulthood, you're going to unconsciously chase it when you're an adult. So for example, a lot of these rappers who grew up very poor, they love to flaunt their money and their wealth around because it's something that they didn't have when they were uh, a kid. Or another example is maybe somebody who, 
you know, didn't get enough attention or healthy praise when they were kids. Maybe they were a bit neglected. So now they're going to constantly try to be noticed when they're adults. They're going to tr uh, constantly try to like do things for attention, climb the corporate ladder. They really want to be respected by everybody, right? That's another example. Well, the same thing goes for sex. If you dealt with a lot of rejection, uh, didn't receive that sort of validation from the opposite sex in your younger years, it may be something that's going to sort of eat away at you. And it forms a lot of very unconscious behavioral patterns that sometimes we aren't even aware of. Because you see, what, what all of the, the incel types have in common, they're all very, and not all of them, I'm kind of generalizing here, but they're all very kind of like angry and they're full of hate and they isolate themselves away from society. So if that's something that you're going to going through, then I suggest you deal with that first. You need to learn to love. That's going to be the antidote for this. You have to learn to love yourself. You have to learn to love uh, humanity in general. You have to learn to really just accept everything for the way it is. Uh, that's going to be key. That's going to be the first step in order to actually self-actualize and improve yourself. But the celibacy I'm talking about here is more for people who may have lived that promiscuous lifestyle. Uh, maybe they chased sex for a while and realized it just left a really empty void in them. Um, that's kind of what happened to me. But when I made a conscious effort to stop chasing it completely and to stop indulging anything, indulging in anything related to it, including my own thoughts, that's when I really started to evolve spiritually. It's when I truly learned to love and accept myself. Again, is celibacy 100% necessary for this? Uh, probably not, but that's what worked for me. And it works, seems like it works for a lot of other people as well. Because when your mind is so wrapped up in sex and dating and craving attention, you know, that's the thing. It's not even just about the sex. It's about constantly chasing validation from somebody else, trying to find that validation either in porn, through dating apps, through whatever your thing is. That's what you're really trying to give up. The whole thing. I know it's kind of outdated, but do you remember in the 40 year old virgin when they show him like painting his dolls and playing video games? Uh, the, the movie was trying to paint a picture like he's a loser, but in reality, I thought that he seemed genuinely happy when he was doing that stuff. He was having more fun than those other guys uh, that were, you know, going to clubs and trying to chase pussy all the time. He was actually having a good time just being by himself and doing the things that he loves. And this is kind of what I was saying about the guys who were, were like hermits. They were just so passionate about whatever they were doing that they didn't care about sex. And in my opinion, that's sort of what it feels like. That's kind of what I'm going through right now. When you begin to truly desexualize your brain, uh, it brings you back to a state of childlike joy and wonder. And you no longer have this anchor weighing you down. Think about when you were a kid, like you didn't care about trying to impress the opposite sex. Uh, you didn't, weren't trying to get anything from them. Even if you maybe had a crush on somebody in your class, you just liked them for who they were. You weren't, you didn't need anything from them. You didn't need to be validated by them. Children don't really understand things like they don't do things necessarily for validation. Another important insight or important thing to note is that being able to spend time in solitude and be completely comfortable with it is going to be extremely important when you do this. Solitude is absolutely necessary on a journey like this. When you're doing this sort of deep inner work, this deep self-reflection, it requires so much time for you to be able to really sit and get to know yourself in a way that you never have before. And you might say like, oh, well, I spend all, I spend a lot of my time alone. Yeah, but if you're spending a lot of time alone and you don't like who you are and you're miserable, that doesn't really count. You have to learn to do it in a way where you become comfortable with it and you actually crave solitude. Because many people aren't going to really understand this. Most people aren't. And they're just going to try to bring you down. Whether or not it's conscious, whether or not they don't even realize they're doing it. That was definitely the case for me and I had to cut a lot of those people out, unfortunately. But that's just how that goes. So that's about it for today, guys. Thanks always for watching. Please feel free to subscribe, like, comment, whatever you, whatever you prefer. And I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Thank you.